Welcome to part four of Project Assistance series on variance analysis concepts in Microsoft Project 2013. In part four, we will cover cost variance analysis. In part one, we gave an overview of how variance analysis is done and how Microsoft Project calculates the, the five variance fields. In today's video, we're going to focus on cost variance. As you may recall, the cost field contains the current estimate of cost. This field is often calculated by multiplying rates times hours, or in some, some cases, even material costs. The baseline cost contains the original estimated field, which was copied from the cost field to the baseline cost field when we baselined our plan. Anytime the cost now changes, and becomes different than the baseline cost, Microsoft Project will generate a cost variance. Let's see how this works in Microsoft Project. I'm going to show all active tasks. And typically, we might come into Microsoft Project viewing something like the entry table. One of, the, one of the best ways to find cost variances is to think of a table that contains cost information. So if we apply the cost table, we can see cases where the total cost is different than the baseline cost and has generated a variance. You may also recall that we have discussed the idea of a view which brings together a filter, a table, and a group. If we want to zero in on unfavorable cost variances, we could apply something like cost over budget filter, the cost table, and maybe even a group if we had a group of resources or a group of tasks that we wanted to view. Like for example, capital related cost. We could group by capital versus non-capital. Let's take a look at how this works in Microsoft Project. When I click on the view tab of the ribbon, I can apply a filter called work over budget. Now you'll notice it's not in the menu, so let's go to more filters. I mean, I mean cost over budget. If I look at the cost over budget filter, it says it's going to show me any place where the cost or the current estimated cost is greater than the baseline cost. Okay, so the current estimate is greater than the original. And the baseline cost is not equal to zero, which means uh, it's either been baselined or it has some level of cost that's been applied to it. So if I apply that table, Microsoft Project now has excluded all the tasks that are not having unfavorable variances and has zeroed in on just those tasks that have unfavorable variances. You may also recall in our navigational series on Microsoft Project that not only do I have the opportunity to look at cost without assignments, okay, I'm looking at task-based information without assignments. That's the Gantt chart. What if we were to look at how tasks were spread over time? In this case, we could look at how costs are spread over time. Okay. Now, in that case, I'm going to go to the task usage view, not the Gantt chart. This says not spread over time. So if I go to the task usage view, let's see what happens. I'm going to right mouse click over here on my view bar. Or if you're showing the view bar, you can actually choose the task usage view here. But since I'm not showing the view bar, I'm turning it off. I'm going to right mouse click choose task usage. Okay, and on the right hand side of the column or the divider, it's showing work-based information. We can see the work field here. We also see that it's not showing us anything in the current time scale. So again, going back to our PowerPoint, you may recall when we went through the notes, in this case note number one, the left side of the divider there's guidance, and on the right side of the divider. For more details, please refer to our video on navigating a Microsoft project, especially the part as it relates to using the task and usage views. So let's go back to Microsoft project and use some of these concepts that were covered in that navigational video. If I right mouse click, I can remove work. I can add cost. If I want to see cost by month, I can zoom out to a monthly time scale. If I'm not seeing cost in my current view, I can either scroll over in this case, if they were already off, all the way off the screen, I could click on the task tab of the ribbon 
and choose scroll to task. In this case, I now see how the costs are being planned to be spent over time. If I were to collapse the phase, I can now see the cost expenditures by phase. There are many other ways we can look at cost variances, work variances, schedule variances. And there are many, many ways we can bring together groups, tables, and filters to create views to show us this information in Microsoft Project. That concludes our four-part series on variance analysis in Microsoft Project 2013.